This is the California block from the American Album Patterns by P3 Designs. In my workshop this last weekend, I promised my students that I would post something on my website form on how to make the quail's head. The quail's head is one of the smallest pieces on here and has some interesting techniques in how I put this together. So now I'm going to prep some of the pieces and then we can get started. To start with, we're going to start with quail's head. The first thing that I do is trace each of the templates and then iron them to the wrong side of the fabric. The next thing you'll want to do is you want to make a base unit. And the base unit is this upper body from his chest to the top of his head. Do not do his beak or the top knot. Make sure that you put all the markings on here so that you can see through easily when we go to place our pieces on the template. The next thing that you'll do is you'll start ironing your templates. You want to go all the way around except for the area where something sits underneath. If you've marked your templates with a dotted line in red, then you know that you don't need to air iron this air surface area because it sits underneath something else, just like I've done here. This edge will sit underneath this piece, so I don't need to iron that surface area. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my base unit and place it on my ironing board, and I will iron my template to the base unit. The base unit is shiny side up, and you want to get this in the correct position. So if you don't have it exactly where you want it, you can lift it up and then iron it in place again. Once I get this in position, then I'm going to insert the under piece. Whoops, I forgot to iron an edge here. So we're going to take our template and place it back over here. I will apply some starch on here and I'm going to turn the seam allowance up over my edge here. Once I know that this is dry, then I'll remove my iron and then I can insert this into the position on the base unit. Now I want to line this up uh, so that it fits exactly as it should in the finished image. I'll hit this with the iron again and then I'll come back with my Roxanne's glue base using very little basting glue and if your glue happens to uh, dry up in your tip just take a needle and plunge it and it will come out easily. You're going to lift up the seam allowance from the upper piece and lightly apply some basting glue. Once I have the basting glue in the correct position, then I can always come back with my iron now because I want to get my pieces together and make sure that that glue is dry. We have an underlying piece here that I need to place in the areas where I have this light area of reverse applique. And I believe I position this correctly. I'm going to lift this up. I want to make sure from the opposite side that I have enough seam allowance so that it will cover all of the areas that will be revealed with a reverse applique. Making sure that I have a seam allowance that I'll be able to turn around the edge when I need it. Once I get this into position, I can iron this in place and that will just hold it. But this will be the area that will, will be revealed with the reverse applique. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to iron our piece that sort of looks like a shoe. This upper edge we do not iron and this little tiny edge down here we don't iron. So come in here and make your clips. And I've already clipped this one. 
Normally, I would tell you to iron this edge first, but in this case, we want to iron this long edge first so that our seam will easily hide. So we're going to come along here and we're going to iron this part of the point first. Those of you who are in the class will remember why we did this occasionally so that we didn't have to deal with hiding that sharp point after we were doing our sewing. So once I've done this, I can come back and I can lift this up and I can iron that excess seam allowance up over the edge. Now make sure that this small area, which kind of resembles a heel of a shoe, is ironed down properly. Uh, if you may remember that when I said that the smaller the surface area of a piece of freezer paper, the less it wants to stick to itself or anything else. Now come back with your starch and get this area down. And this time I'll be using the small iron. The small iron because I'm going to get down in these little tiny places and I need to make sure that I can easily uh, pull in the seam allowance around this small concave. Now once inside here, I can just allow my iron to swirl around and flip up the seam allowance over that little tiny area that forms the heel of the shoe shape. Okay, I need to make sure that this seam allowance over here is ironed down. I may not have left my iron on here long enough and when you find that you've not left your iron on your seam allowance long enough for the seam to stay nice and flat, you either need to apply a little bit more starch or and heat or a little just a little bit more heat. In this case I needed starch and heat to make that seam lay nice and flat. Now the last surface area we're going to be ironing is this edge here and we will come back with our tiny iron. Now remember the reason that I like the small iron is the surface area of the foot of the iron is only about a half, half inch long. It gets very hot and you can get in really tight small areas. Once I've ironed around this area I generally turn my piece over to the front to make sure everything looks exactly the way I want. And if it does, then I will iron it from the front. Make sure that it's nice and warm. The warmer a template is, the easier it is to pull out. Once you pull this out, then you want to go back and you want to iron down those seam allowances flat again. Going back to our base unit, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to look at my seam allowance and I know that I'll have excess seam allowance up here around the head. I need to leave a small area for a raw edge here but there's a couple of places here where we can remove some of this excess fabric and that it won't make it so hard when we go to turn the rest of our unit. So along here, now some of this seam allowance here once I've removed the whole head from the base unit, I'll be able to get rid of some of this raw edge easily. So now, and this is the hard part, you want to pick up your piece. <clears throat> and generally I like to go ahead and I want to put my basting glue on here now. I'm going to apply my basting glue. And you really want as little as possible, but sometimes that's a little hard to do. So we're going to come in here. I'm going to lift this area up right here. But before I let this set down, I'm going to hold this up to the light so that I can see the exact placement of where my face needs to be. And this is why it was very important to make sure make sure that you have those black lines behind there because I can generally hold this up to the light and then I'll be able to see if I have this positioned exactly the way I want. I do see that I again forgot to iron down this one little piece here. I was trying to do this so that I could have all these shapes ready for you. But 
just like I'm having this problem myself, you may have this problem yourself, so you want to carefully fold under that seam allowance. Ah, there we go. And I'm going to hit this with the starch, and then I'm going to hit this with the iron. And once I get that dry, I'm going to make sure that I know that that edge is also basted in place with just a dot of glue. The next one is, since this was 111, the next piece is the mouth, the beak, which is 112. And I've already ironed this, but as you can see from my template, I did not iron this one surface area here because the top of the head will sit over that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the position of where my beak goes. So I'm going to come over here and I want to position my beak. If I were at my light box, I would be able to see this a lot easier than holding it here in front of the camera. So I'm just going to get it in the general area where it should be. But when you do this, make sure you have it in the correct position. Um, so once I know that I have this in the exact position where it needs to go, I'm just going to place my glue on there. The next shape that I need to iron is the little brown piece that goes on top of his head. You need to iron around three edges. One has a slight concave, a very slight concave. Again, with a small iron will help you. Also, when ironing things that are square or rectangular, if you iron opposing sides, then that third edge will want to angle in and you won't end up with any seam allowances that will flare out and get in your way. And also come back, find the edge of the template, score it, flip it up over the top, hit it with the iron. I hope that you can see this. These pieces are very small. Hit this with the iron and once this is dry then we'll remove the template. Okay, I think it's just about dry. Once I've done this, I'm going to fly away on you. I'm going to remove my template. Hit this with the iron again to make sure my seam allowances are nice and flat so they'll fit nicely. Apply a bit of glue to this piece. If you get too much glue, just dab it off. That's the easiest way to get rid of it. And then again, I would come over here and line this up. I would normally be holding this up to the light box so that I could see exactly where it's supposed to go. There we go. The last piece that goes on the head covers the outside edge of his head is a different color. It has a curved surface here. This is one of the times when I'm working with a small piece that I will actually go ahead and make my template larger so that I have something to hold on to. And that makes it a lot easier to iron. I made my clips. I'm going to come along with my starch. I'll come back with my small iron. And I will come around here and turn my seam allowance. Once you turn the seam allowance, we'll remove the template and we'll place it on our base unit. This method is kind of a modified multiple unit technique that I use many times on many of my other patterns. Um, it's just that this time we're using it as a foundation to get everything in position. If I don't see something I like, I usually will come back and fix it. It's a lot easier for me to fix it with the iron than it is when I'm sewing. Once I've done this, I remove, remove my template, hit it with the iron again to make sure that the seam is nice and flat, and then I'm going to bring back in my base unit. Come back with the basting glue, and it, once again, if you get too much basting glue, just Move it around, get rid of the excess, 
Sometimes I'll even blot it on my ironing mat to get rid of the excess. And now what we'd like to reveal is we'd like to reveal that, that small curve of hair on his head. Uh, truly the best way to do this would be at the light box. But again, I'm just doing this here so you can see how to do this. Once I have this in position, hit it with the iron so that I know it's nice and hot. And then I'll and dry. And then I can come over here, trim away any of the excess seam allowance so that I can turn this easily. And now I'll come back with my starch, my iron, and I can pull the seam allowances up over the base unit. One thing to rem remember is try not to work on a very soft uh, ironing mat. You want something that's nice and firm. Um, this one is actually a little softer than I like, but it was nice and bright and white and clean and you could see easily on this today. So once I have this ironed, I want to make sure that it looks good from the front. Ah, uh, yes, I could probably get my seam a little bit tighter here. And this is why I like the base unit behind there, because I can pull my seam allowance up around and then hit it with the iron and get it to lay nice and flat. All right. There's this next area here where we can turn this seam allowance. We may need to clip right here because this is a concave. And we're going to flip this excess seam allowance up over our base unit. And we'll be able to trim some of this away. Once I've done this, I'm just about ready to remove this from my template. Actually, I think I am ready. I will carefully remove my template from my base unit. And... As I see, I did not get this glued in here very well, so we're going to come back and I'm going to reposition this where it's supposed to be. There we go. We have a little trouble seam allowance here. Actually, it's because the fabric is a little heavy in that area and uh, it was a thicker fabric and it just doesn't want to turn as well as I would like it to. Now this is the time when I came back and I lifted open my black seam allowance and I wrapped it around to the back to help make that intersection of the two pieces of fabric nice and smooth. Get it in position, hit it with the iron so that you know it will stay nice and flat. But you also should add just a little dot of basting glue underneath the black. Make sure that you have it pulled tight to the body. You can hit it with the iron. If there's any extra seam allowance that you can remove, this is the time to do it. And there is over here, so I'm going to remove this. And what we have is we have our quail's head. Now, the only thing that I will do when I'm sewing this is because I have this piece of material that wants to fight me on this one, um, I will most likely try one more time to pull in the seam allowance. Uh, if it doesn't go this time, then I know that I'm just going to have to pull that in when I sew which is fairly easy now that everything has already been turned. At this point, I need to make his little top knot. Now, instead of making t one each, I actually drew my top knot, moved over a half an inch, and drew the second top knot because we need for the, one for the opposite side of the block. I'm gonna come along here, and I'm going to clip my concaves. Again, going back to your <laughs> small iron and you're going to flip your seam allowance up over the edge. 
Make sure that you leave your iron down long enough for the seam allowance to dry. That's very important. When it gets to the area where it is a convex, I need to pull in my fullness as I'm going around here. So evenly distribute the seam allowance as you're going around. Once you turn all the way around your piece, then you'll remove your template and cut your piece in half and then you'll have one for each side of your quilt block. Your finished unit will look like this. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this will help you making your quails on, on your, your American Album blocks. Thank you.